Are the fins straight or are they curved? Do the fins actually impart a rotation to the projectile? Ooh, accurate. Hello everyone, today we're going to do a little sciencing using this Anferoff bullet. It's a fin stabilized discarding Sabo projectile. Using high tech sorcery we can see how this fits in the shell. In this space around the fins is where the powder would normally be. The Sabo's purpose is to keep the projectile centered in the barrel and in this case it also functions as the gas seal. This is the Sabo and this is the projectile. A lot of people think the projectile is called a Sabo for some reason. When this is fired, this whole assembly travels down the barrel and when it exits the barrel, the sabos fall away and the dart continues on flying. Normally, fin stabilized projectiles have a straight fin, at least the 12 gauge variety that we often test. Now on our videos where we demonstrate these, a lot of viewers who are curious ask if, you know, bending the fins would impart a spin and possibly make them more accurate or more stable. And of course, we always have the rifling makes everything better people who insist that a fin stabilized projectile would be more stable if it was spun like a top. Okay, are the fins straight or are they curved? Do the fins actually impart a rotation to the projectile? So right now they're straight. Okay. Um, so it's like a rocket ship. A rocket shoots straight. So that's essentially what we've done. Okay. Would you get better accuracy by giving it some rotation like a Foster Slug? Um, so there's actually three different ways you can stabilize projectiles. Right. There is uh, the spin, which everyone knows of, and then you have the flared, mm -hmm. drag, which is like a shuttlecock, and then you have fin stabilization. And then the other two stabilizations don't need spin to stabilize them; they okay. fly straight. So we could add spins, but the spin isn't really needed with the fin. Not concerned. So not concerned. Okay. To reiterate, there are many projectiles that must have gyroscopic spin to stabilize them so they fly straight through the air. In the shotgun world, we also have a method of stabilizing a projectile using the plastic wad, the gas seal, as a stabilizer. And these function quite well without any spin stabilization. These are uh, often popular in countries that prohibit rifled barrels and shotguns. And we also have fin stabilized, not to be confused with this kind of fin. And these use centuries old technology used in arrows, uh, just simple fletchings to keep them flying straight through the air. And another design we have, which is over a hundred years old, called the Diablo shape. And I would almost venture to call these a mono fin design because that conical skirt kind of acts like fletching in its own way. But as you can see, the Diablo shape works perfectly fine at supersonic speeds without any spin at all. So we got to ask ourselves what advantage will we have if we angle the fins on a fin stabilized projectile? It's already fin stabilized, so I is adding spin stabilization just redundant? Is it just an oxymoron? But as you can see, I put a pretty aggressive uh, twist on these things, a 40 degree angle, and as this thing is flying through the air, it should be spinning counterclockwise, looking from the rear, or anti-clockwise if you're British. Okay, let's check out the high-tech water drop test. This was filmed at around 4,000 frames a second. And as you can see, the straight fin design just kind of does what you expect it to do. Just drop straight down the 12 inches of water and hits the bottom. Now let's take a look at the angled fin version. Now going into this, my thoughts were with the angle fins, you are creating some more drag, more parasitic drag. It takes energy to spin that thing, right? So I was expecting to see this fall a little bit slower than the straight fin design. But surprisingly, when we watch a side-by-side -side comparison of these two, there's really no discernible difference in how fast they're dropping through the water. That was a big surprise to me. Welcome back, Talflater folks. Jeff and Officer Greg out here with you with a big surprise. I know you're gonna be shocked. We're shooting slugs, and these were sent to us by Dmitry Anfarov. So he calls these the Anfarov dart. Bullet. The Anfarov bullet. Damn it, why do I keep interrupting? Never mind, Dis I, disregard that. Those of you who have a problem with that, it is Jeff's show, so he gets to interrupt whenever he wants to. So it, just be glad it's in English. 
We're going to fire these Anfarov bullets down there downrange today. Uh, they are a fin stabilized round, so they're already flying pretty stabilized. We've got a couple different versions of them though, and we're going to see if we can't over stabilize. So we have straight fins and we have curved fins, and uh, so we're going to fire the straight rounds and the not straight rounds. And the question is, can it be more stable than stable? Right. If you're <laughs> flying a jet in the air and the jet has fins on it and the jet is stable, does the jet become more stable if it starts to corkscrew through the air? It doesn't seem to make a lot of sense. So we're going to try these fin stabilized rounds and then we're going to try spinning these fin stabilized rounds. Brandon's waiting for us downrange and uh, let's get to it. Okay, straight fins first. I'm ready. Straight fins, here we go. Ooh, accurate. Oh, and he gave up. 14.52. This is our baseline test using the unmodified straight fin projectile. And there is absolutely no dispute there. This is a very stable flying projectile. So the first question is, how much more stable can you get than that? Now another question that viewers have posed to us is, is there actually any airflow going over those fins? Do those fins actually do anything? In the next test, we'll be able to answer that. Okay. Orange dot. Wow. Left enough to hit the Coke can. Seven up. To hit the Diet Coke? It's seven up Diet Coke. Oh yeah, that's the only thing in this first test, we can see that our angled fins do indeed impart a very significant spin on the projectile. In fact, it's a greater spin rate than if it was shot out of a rifled barrel. This projectile is flying close to 1,000 miles per hour. In fact, you can see some shock waves kind of coming off the tail surfaces. Even though this thing is spinning like a top, it never quite stabilizes. I guess the big surprise is it wasn't terribly inaccurate. Let's give it another try. Maybe this was just a fluke. Maybe we had poor Sabo separation. Who knows? Okay, I'm ready. Here we go, orange dot. Fin, fin, fins. Oh! Oh, nice! Got a little cascade, cascading pink there. Fin, fin, fins. Oh! In the second test using the bent fins, we had much better results. I'm just not super happy with my camera work here, but I'm only human, and I need to be loved. Just like everyone else does. Okay, that was horrible. <laughs> but at least in this shot, we had stability on par with our baseline test, using spin too. But we still have to ask, is there any advantage to spin stabilizing a fin stabilized projectile? Now based off one baseline test, it seems like our straight fin projectile is a little more precise or accurate. And obviously it would take many more tests to prove or disprove that. But what have we learned here? First of all, we learned that there is airflow traveling over the fins at supersonic speeds. We also learned that we can impart a very significant spin on the projectile using just the supersonic slipstream. While spin doesn't appear to give us any better stability, it can help buffer out ballistic defects. And this will require some high-tech graphics to illustrate. Now, no matter how precise we can imagine a projectile to be, there are minute imperfections in them. And even the tiniest of defects can cause the projectile to travel off course, up, down, left, right. There's no way to predict it. And there's nothing to correct for this error. So let's say at 100 yards, the best grouping you could get is about six inches. But if we spin a projectile with the same imperfections, well, it'll yaw a little bit to the one direction. And as the projectile rotates, it'll yaw in the other direction and essentially buffer out these errors. In theory, we can reduce our grouping by about 50% from six inches down to three inches. We always learn something new in every test we do, and I hope you learn something too. Thank you for watching, and we will see you next time.